Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This one was sent in by Red Snow on the Discord. If you'd like to send in a save for me to have a peek at in this show, simply jump onto my Discord server. Link is in the description. And then leave your save in the Discord save sharing room for Dwarf Fortress. DF save sharing is the name of it. Uh, simply follow what other people have been doing. Leave a little blurb about your fort. Doesn't need to be too long. Doesn't need to be too short. A couple screenshots and make sure that you leave permission to me to be able to use it in this show. Assuming you'd like it to show up here, unless you just want to share the save, in which case, then just share the save. If I skip it, it's probably because it's heavily modded. If you are using a bunch of mods, please include your mod save folder, because otherwise it is unlikely that I will be able to load it. All right, so all that said, this is the Fortress of Copper Lords of the Warm Citadel of the Heroic Mansion. So I, in my head, I've been calling this fortress a Man, I, I, in, in my head, I've been calling this fortress a, uh, a, a like a great dam, I would say. And, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, out here on the outside, um, it's just kind of this little tower thing. There's some drawbridges to slam it shut, a little ramp set up to let characters run down. We've got a Baroness hanging out here up top. Uh, no zones or anything, but definitely battlements for uh, like Mark's Dwarves, I would assume. Personally, I would have done a pointed ceiling on the roof, uh, just because flat roofs are a little dull to me, but um, we have roads running along the edges of the map, kind of screaming for a bridge right there, if you ask me, but, I mean, you live your, you, you live your own life. There is a small bridge over here on the side. Many cl Much clear-cutting has been done, as well as spaces have been grown underground for, for safe tree uh, usage, but we're kind of giving stuff away here, so over here on uh, the side, you can actually see this. So this is where the water has been largely dammed and where it's flowing down into here. From there, it flows all the way across over to this drawbridge, right? Through this aqueduct and channel uh, all the way along to the corner uh, with this rock salt bridge, which can then be dumped into this very, very, well, <laughs> very large uh, chasm, I would say. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Now. At the end of this video, I'm actually going to fire this thing off. I, I want to I want to try seeing how much of a flow this thing gets. But look at how deep this thing goes. Inside of it, we have a, uh, a tower that has the king's quarters in it, uh, office, dining hall, as well as space for the mayor, and I guess some unassigned rooms as well. And down beneath it, of course, the king's tomb and whatnot. Uh, then there's this long walkway over to a very nice staircase, which then goes up and into the fort itself. So let's run through the fort itself, and then I'll try pulling that lever and, 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 and see what happens. Um, so let, let's run up to the fort itself. So the actual entryway here is right here. It kind of runs down sideways into this zone um, with uh, a dog here to spot any uh, incoming invaders, and then spaces around the edges for Mark's Dwarves, I would assume. Um, not a huge amount of defense for this side of the fort. I'm assuming they just kind of want to catch them in, uh, uh, in advance and then lock this door. Um, but, uh, you know, still defendable, nothing, nothing too bad. A uh, good number of happy dwarves and a very large area that's been cut out here, uh, as well as a secondary ramp that runs down this way, uh, down into the, um, kind of lower areas down here. But if we go down, okay, well, that's right below. I thought that that connected to this, but nope, it does not, turns out. Anyway. Uh, plenty of rock salt space for the dwarves. Uh, nice uh, mist setup coming from uh, the side of the, the, the refilling mechanism, which then flows down this way, uh, in through into there, so that they have a constant flow of mist. Dining hall, of course, and uh, bedrooms around the edge. Missing, like, cabinets and stuff, but, you know, I, I guess the, the king's uh, grand waterfall and whatnot took, took priority then. Uh, over here we have barracks and military stuff, as well as some crafting shops, and uh, plenty of ale for the dwarves and the many gravestones and permanent beds for those who don't wake. You gotta love to see it. Then as we go a little further down, uh, you can see more spaces that have been carved out in stone, uh, as as well as if I hit Z, you can see uh, so, some more nice bedrooms and actually quite a large dormitory as well. Uh, a bunch of sculpture gardens, uh, which are uh, set up as guild halls. Sculpture gardens are basically just, it, it automatically titles them a sculpture garden if you make a meeting zone that just happens to have statues in it. That's all that sculpture gardens are. I've had people ask me for tutorials on those. It's like, there really isn't one. It's just a different name for the exact same effect, except sometimes they have happy thoughts because they saw a statue. At you. That's literally it. Um, and then uh, there's dining hall over here for the outpost liaison, because this is a capital. It's not quite a mountain home, but it is a capital. 
move down a little further. More of the unwaking bedrooms and uh, more uh, of the guild halls. Uh, and then over here, we have two more uh, guild halls uh, high of varying value. We have uh, oops, a stockpile filled with plenty of supplies and things, well, crafting and mechanisms and, of course, uh, bars and blocks and smelters of all sorts. And then we have kind of an empty space that isn't really built into anything yet. We can move a little further down. And then there's this very lovely little library, which I'm a big fan of, 277 books, uh, lacking in, in, in some writing materials, but I mean, they, they do have some, so, so that, that's a good sign. Uh, up top here, we have this uh, lovely uh, set, set of bedrooms that are perfectly set up as they should be. Same even more down here. You love to see it. And then we can move a little further down and we can see some more of this. We've got, uh, you know, more dining halls and stuff. This stuff's assigned to the Baron. And then down here, we've got stuff that's set, assigned to the other Baron. How many Barons are in this fort, actually? Uh, damn, quite a few. You know, I, it's it's been a while since I've had a, a, a fortress where just like, I, and I know I've seen people say this. It's like, I just had all these Barons show up. It's like, I, I haven't had that happen in like two or three years. <laughs> like, it's been so long. Like, it's like... I it was maybe before Long Death the last time I had just like a Baron show up and then another Baron show up so I know it happens and like now this version of the game is out we're seeing it happen more frequently but like it's literally just because like somebody was migrating to your fortress and their relative passed away and then they arrive and they're like I have this rank now we uh, and it's just kind of great um, then we have some more stuff assigned and more uh, as well as a big old central dining hall and uh, some paddocks for animals on the side. I guess that they just like looking at the animals. You know, we, we've got uh, obviously weasels and uh, pangolins and black bears. Um, so and then down here we have capybaras and alpacas. It's, it's good to see. Uh, we move down and this kind of pattern just continues until it hits drainage, which then puddles back out into the into the creekly there. And uh, then over here, this way just kind of goes all the way up to here and then up into the king's quarters. And then, lastly, we have this little stairwell, which kind of goes through uh, first and second cavern layers, which definitely have encountered forgotten beasts and other fun critters. Uh, we can move down through the next cavern layer, which is a lovely cavern layer. This is a beautiful one. I, I love the way that this particular type of cavern spawns. They just always look cool, and I always have to do this. I mean, look at this. It's beautiful. Look at that ASCII. Look at that ASCII. It's so nice. Maybe that's why YouTube keeps demonetizing my stuff is because I say ASCII. Anyway, don't ASCII me about that one. Let's move down. Uh, and uh, then we've got, uh, you know, more, more more trimming around, searching for materials, same with this kind of thing. Uh, and then we get down here to the even lower layer, which once again, I got to show off the prettiness of those ASCII colors. Mm -mm -mm. Gorgeous. You can even see the streaks of red tildes uh, of the, the, the great pool of Uzbaz, the Merc's Forgotten Beast. Uh, goo shall we say um and then the purple arrows of course going up and down beautiful love it um anyway then as we move down this is basically the bottom we're down in the magma sea and uh, they're slowly trimming away at the strip mining this seems to be a lot of people's i think meta strat of just like strip mining um yeah it works it's not the way i'd do it but it works and then down here in the center, uh, they've, they've dug a little further, and uh, there's a few spots here where they've like collided with uh, Dwarf Fortress's equivalent of bedrock, which is semi-molten rock. But uh, I promised I would try this. I'm assuming that there is a lever connected to this. Yep, empty dam. So I'm going to pull this lever and set this to top priority and then pause the game. Actually, I'm going to wait until I'm back on the right spot, and then I'm going to unpause the game, because I would like to see how quickly this flows. So, now we wait. Lever has been queued up, and we get to begin waiting. So, while we're waiting for this to go off, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who's been, you know, watching this series going forward, and uh, to everybody who's been spending time watching these videos as they get uploaded. If, if you know, as always, if you want to chuck in a fort to have a look, for me to have a look at, or something that you built, built a while ago, just put it into the queue. It might take me a little bit, but we'll get to it eventually. Okay, so... I'm assuming... Yep, <laughs> there we go. The game is, uh, took a little bit to think about it. Oh boy. I'm seeing water come back up. This is, uh, that's a lot of water. Um, well, <laughs> oh boy. Um, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this, this fort was worth downloading just to be able to pull that lever. Um, now the real question is how much of the fort do you think I'm drowning right at this exact moment? Look, you can see it like going up the mini map. There's a tidal wave. Oh, that's incredible. So I do got to point out a flaw 
in your damn emptying mechanism. It's pretty hard to do this without like drowning the entire fort. Um, so let, let's, I'll just keep talking over this and, and, we'll, and we'll see how long it takes for this thing to drain or this menu to close, by the way, which I've tried to close. Like, I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to close it. You, we can close you menu. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. Okay. Now we actually have a good view. Um, so I guess what, what I got to say is just, you know, thank you very much to everybody who's been hanging out and watching these videos. And uh, I, I, I've i been very much enjoying seeing uh, all the things that people send in and the inspiration and the uh, different ideas that people have. Um, you know, like I've, I've been playing this game for a really long time, but everybody always kind of has unique ways of doing things uh, that is just cool as hell to see. I mean, even something like this, like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't build this. This is awesome, though. I'm really glad that, like, you know, I'm, I'm able to look at this particular save. Like, look, look at this. This is goofy as hell, but I love it. Like, oh, no. Oh, God, I'm below, I'm below ground. Can I, can I get back up? There we are. Look, like, just look at that very slow tidal wave. <laughs> like, coming in and just causing absolute pandemonium. It's great. Oh, man. Ah, it's like a single frame per minute. It's still it's still flowing. I mean, look at this. Look look at all the wood going everywhere. It's just it's a it's an actual tidal wave. It's a very slow running tidal wave, but it's still an actual tidal wave. I mean, the recording's still running smoothly, so that's good. I guess what I gotta say is just you know if you if you would like to support the the documentation I guess of epic forts like this or just are interested in dwarf fortress in general check out this YouTube channel uh, there's 50 of these in this playlist for uh, the community forts and uh, if um, <laughs> if you would like to uh, support me and my work directly you can do that either, either via Patreon uh, because YouTube sometimes doesn't let me monetize my videos or you can check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L and uh, that's that's where I stream and that's kind of my my main gig and uh, if for some reason um, like you, you want to support the channel but can't do anything financially just share it around send send people over post it in discords you like you know uh, tell people that we exist over here uh, I think I'm going to call it because this is just going to take a really long time and I just want to say thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.